Hello everybody, this is Catch Up here, and it is time again to talk about a new cameo. This time it's Janet Cage, who is the second entry into the kind of puppet character design that's in this game. It debuted with Kenshi, and now Janet Cage is very much doing the same kind of thing, where you can control a separate character, separate to your own. You know, your base fighter to do some extra stuff. Now, she came out yesterday, however, I wanted to do this video today, so I had time to really play, grind it out, figure out how this cameo works, because, to be honest, she's really complicated. Uh, she is by far the most complicated cameo in the game. Might even be the most complicated character in the game outright. So, I'll talk about some of the basics first, and then more importantly, start talking about the tech. Because there's quite a lot of tech already, but, you know, barely a day after she's come out. Uh, so, there's a lot to talk about, and I'll try and make it as cohesive as I possibly can, because it is a bit complicated. So first of all, neutral cameo, she has an up punch. This is safe on block at minus six. It's plus on hit, plus 34 in fact. Uh, it works as a reversal and wake up attack. So if I were to set, uh, let's have Sub-Zero just sort of sweep and then try and do an attack. Uh, if I do it as a wake up, it does work as a wake up, but unfortunately the cameo wake ups are kind of infamously unreliable for the most part. So uh, this is a reversal and wake up attack, but it does not beat everything. But it is an option if you're desperate and it's kind of all you've got. Uh, the big thing about it is that it's a restand. If I hit the opponent in the corner, let's just do this. This is a plus on hit restand that gives you some sort of guaranteed situation. Like I said, it's plus 34 on hit. And again, safe on block. So it's not too bad if you uh, just do it on block on its own. You're not going to get punished unless you're against Lee Mei. It's minus six. So her flip kick will punish it. But I think that's kind of the only thing that will punish it. Outside of that, it kind of does everything you expect it to do. It's a summon. It's a strike. It's plus. You get a situation afterwards. You can even safe jump with this in the corner because they cannot up block. They don't have time to up block there. Uh, depending on your jump timing, they might be able to armor, but that is very much a character by character situation. So overall, the nut punch is pretty damn good. The next move to talk about, which is actually a bit more complicated than you might think, is the forward and back cameo. This is an ambush jump punch, the move that's kind of reminiscent of the original uh, first ever Mortal Kombat Johnny Cage corner loops that he used to have. Uh, this move right here. This will only hit people that are in the air, so as you can see, it's not going to hit a grounded opponent. It kind of functions as like a square wave attack, similar to the Chameleon Melina Psy or a Sonya square wave. Something that's just kind of used to extend combos. Uh, I've been playing Rain recently with this cameo. So for example, a meterless combo could be something like this. You can now turn that into a full combo off a meterless launcher. Uh, this normally doesn't launch, but with the right cameo, can now launch. So you can just do an attack, call in Janet at the right time, of course. And then get an extension that otherwise wouldn't exist. This jump punch can also allow things to combo that normally don't at all. So 114, for example. Uh, this is just a basic example. You can get a combo from that as well. So the long story short is things that normally wouldn't combo, there's a good chance that the Janet Cage jumping punch will let you do that. You may be noticing already, you probably saw it in combat cast or trailers, that there is an extension here. She doesn't just do one punch, you can do up to two more in one go. That is a little bit trickier to do than you might think. It is timing based. And whether you're doing the back cameo or forward cameo, you input the same input right before she hits them. So, for example, I was able to get the two extra loops there. It is purely timing. There's no trick to it. It's right before she hits them is when you want to input that uh, cameo attack. And there's not really much else I can teach you about that. You just have to get the timing down. And it is well worth it for damage. If I'm playing someone like Rain, for example, normally my combos mid-screen would just be something like this, right? That's a really staple Rain combo. If I have Janet Cage, and bear with me here... All of a sudden, we're getting basically 500 damage as opposed to the uh, barely 400 that we were getting before. So the damage is well worth it in these instances. Uh, this also applies in the corner. And the corner, it can change because you don't have to go for the same amount of reps of this, for example. So if I go for a launch here, I can just do a regular one assist. And then I can spend them all on the next hit. And when I say spending them, there's definitely one thing I want to mention about this attack. There is a built-in limitation. You cannot do, in one combo, 
the three extra hits both times. And what I mean by that is, if I go for this assist, so let's say I do one, two, three, that is the only amount of like extra extensions I can have because it costs half cameo gauge and you are able to do this multiple times. So if I do this, I just did this combo before, you'll notice that I can do it again. So that's gonna take the whole cameo gauge. The limitations is that you cannot go one, two, three, extend one, two, three. You can only get the two extra hits at any point in a combo, which is why mid screen, for example, doing something like this. Let me just try that again. That extension is only possible because I am doing one extra loop both times. If I spent the whole thing early, I would not be able to get it again on the second one. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Just when you're doing these combos, keep an eye out on, if you're planning on using both of the cameo gauge, just keep an eye on what extensions you're going for, when and why. Because you only have a few of them per combo, so overall it can help for massive damage if you're doing them just right. So the next move is the up cameo. This is the wall. This is that kind of like ninja mime attack. So up cameo on its own, if you hold the button, she will stay on the screen. This is a complete wall that they cannot get past. You'll notice here they're stuck in place. We're kind of simulating like a corner combo situation here. And this is mainly going to be used in zoning, I think. There may be some setups, but... The short of it is, it restricts their movement, and that really is kind of all you need to know. They can fly over it, you can jump over this, however, it is an obstacle. So whether that obstacle is going to get used for combos, setups, or in my opinion, it's mostly keep away characters that might benefit from that, although it takes a little bit of setup, because obviously she appears right on top of you and you have to back up. The final thing to mention about this though, is that I believe there is a sort of like, health point system here. I think some people have said they think she has 90 health. She might have 100. But basically, while this is out, and I'm just holding it here to record, she can absorb a maximum of four hits regardless. However, if I were to just do a down two, that clears it straight away. So there's clearly like an internal HP count that's going on there. I think it is kind of 90 or 100. If you want to just get rid of it for the touch of a button, an uppercut will do that nicely. Other attacks that have that kind of 90 to 100 threshold will be able to do the same thing. But it's quite simple. Uh, it, it exists to deny and restrict movement. Whether it's used for pressure, combos or zoning, that's up to you. And I guess that's going to be character by character. Okay, so it's time to get complicated. Down and Cameo activates the puppet mode. This is how you start to control Janet on her own, and you can start to do a variety of different attacks that all do different things. You activate this by down and cameo, as I just said. The main move you want to be thinking about here when you're doing extended situations is while holding cameo, press your stance change, and she will taunt. If you look at the top left of your screen, you will notice that by doing this taunt, she will replenish half of a cameo gauge. So, if you have a sequence, a setup, something that... You know, you're landing a combo, she's part of it, you're doing a bunch of attacks with your base character. Using her sort of replenish move is a big part of keeping that combo and pressure on the go. So, before I get stuck into all that stuff, let's just go over the moves first and what they do. So, while you're in puppet mode, standing one and standing two are the sort of high punch, low punches. These are plus on block, they're fast, and they're plus on hit that allows for a combo extender. So they're pretty decent for what they are. Outside of that, you have standing three, which is a mid, standing four, which is a high, both of which pretty plus on block and very plus on hit. It's not just the standing buttons though. Down two is an uppercut. Forward three is the shadow kick. And forward four, is a kind of roundhouse that launches in the corner. Uh, the final move to really focus on here is back four. This is a sweep, and this is a low, and I'm sure you already know where I'm going with this, a low that can pair with your base character. Yeah, there's definitely hard to blockable situations depending on the right character. So on a basic level, we'll just go back into the corner because it's easy to uh, like demonstrate all this here. When she's active, she can do a whole bunch of different attacks all of those attacks will eat into the cameo gauge in some way. And if you're about to run out, that's where you want to kind of do the taunt, replenish it, and then go straight back in. You know, 
because in this instance you can do all kinds of combos off of her hits. This is merely the layer one. There's a lot to go over here, and again, I'm going to try and keep this as quick and short and sweet as I can, but there is a lot to chat about. So I guess first, let's talk about how to safely activate this, because there is wind-up time. There's wind-up time to the mode, and a lot of the combo videos that you see online right now are kind of, she's already there, and she's doing attacks, and she's doing whatever, and then you do whatever to pair with it. Not the most practical. What will be practical is how you can set this up and then land the hit afterwards. That's where it gets more realistic, and there are various ways you can do that. Okay, so the most immediate way to summon Janet safely is if you have a stun that lasts long enough. For example, a Sub-Zero Ground Freeze will actually give you time to get her out and then land extra hits. That's a lot more prominent in the corner, and I'll show you that later. But most characters don't have that, so I'm going to just control player one again. Most characters do not have a standing stun that gives you time. Rain might have, you know, he can do this, he can go into Janet and sort of do whatever he wants to do from the puppet mode, go for a combo, right? There's a lot of different ways. But you're not going to land this on its own. You normally need to set up into this if you're Rain. So if you're a character that doesn't have a stun, what's the best way to set her up? The most practical way comes from either massive knockdown advantage or juggling the opponent so high that you can safely activate and there's nothing they can do to challenge this. For example, if I'm Rain and I do forward 3-2, forward 2 Janet, Janet is activated and there's nothing they can do to stop that. On top of the fact that I am so plus that if I want to go for an attack, let's go opponent type and set the get up mode to enhanced slide. If I want to go for this, not only do I have time to get her out, but I can armor break and meaty as well. So there are many layers to this, but just for an example, Rain has time to do a big launch, summon Janet, block in time, and not only block in time, but actually meaty. And then she can do whatever kind of loops you want to go for. So really, when you're looking at your own character, just look at strings that have either enough knockdown advantage, like, you know, 1-1-2 one, one, with rain. It's not going to be super plus on hit, but it is going to give that sort of knockdown situation that you might be able to look at for your own character. Or a launcher that gives you a safe activation as well. And it's really easy to test. Just set the opponent to wake up attack. Like, preferably a character that has a fast wake up, and that's kind of how you want to look at it. So... The initial activation is one thing, it is what you do with it afterwards that extends the situation and it expands upon those layers. I already showed you just a little bit here. If you have something that not only lets you summon, but get an attack to armor break the opponent, that's when it starts to get pretty ridiculous. So Rain, forward to Janet. <laughs> As you can see, if you have the right kind of setup, the damage can be kind of ridiculous and incredibly fun. That was just a very simple uh, example that I'm showing you there. But when I've been able to get the safe activation of Janet in this mode, how do I make it so she's attacking as the opponent stands to armor break and guarantee some kind of pressure? This is where I want to talk about essentially queuing different attacks. And let's just describe how to do that first. You can actually line up various attacks to play in order without you having to do it then and there. That sounds kind of weird, but hear me out. If I set out Janet with down and cameo, while she's coming out, if I input various moves, I'm just going to go 3-4-3. Three, three. I'm going to summon and then do 3-4-3 three, three really fast. 3-4-3. Three, three. She's going to do the three moves I just lined up back to back. That is incredibly useful when you're doing this kind of stuff because setting up a variety of attacks so she executes them as early as she possibly can is where you can meaty an opponent after you've safely activated. So with this setup, for example... What I did there, and how I armor broke Sub-Zero, was that when I summoned Janet, I did down cameo, an instant standing one, and then I simply meted with my own attack. This means that when I'm doing this, standing one, and now we armor break, because we both attack at the same time, right as the opponent is standing up. 
A big part of this is because I can queue up various moves, and to demonstrate this even further, I'm actually going to play as Sub-Zero here. Let me just quickly, for the sake of me accidentally messing things up, let's put Rain on the right-hand side. If I'm playing someone like Sub-Zero, for instance, and I go for Safe Janet, which I totally messed up, and that is why I've uh, swapped us over here. This is where you can get the sequences on deck. And it's all about queuing up those attacks. So let's just say, theoretically, the opponent just eats this mix-up. Wake up fatal blow? I didn't tell you to do that. That's incredible. Mash in fatal blow? That's something I would do. Haha, <laughs> there's the wake up attack. Uh, so basically what I'm doing here with Sub-Zero is when I landed Janet Cage and I just did four, back four, back four, right? I basically did standing four and then two sweeps. It just so happens that when I time my pressure here... It's all kind of just working out well for me because at the end of the day, I'm doing my overhead and on hit, the second sweep that I input whiffs so it doesn't get in the way of the combo. And if they block the overhead, the sweep comes out and block, making the whole thing just a little bit safer. So being able to basically make Janet come out and then do various moves, I know what I want her to do because it's part of my sequence, it's part of my rushdown. Lining those moves up makes your life a ton easier. And that's just a very basic example. Hopefully I made sense there, but it is incredibly useful for you. The next thing to talk about is how do I actually control Janet Cage properly? Because basically, she shares your input. If I summon her, and we move together, and I'm not holding down anything, I press a button, she press a button. You know, whether it's standing three, whether it's standing four, we do stuff at the exact same time. So if I'm trying to create a sequence where I attack and then she attacks, and we kind of just rotate this, take it in turns, how do I do that? Well, it's actually kind of simple. Hold down your cameo input, and while you're holding it down, she will actually do nothing. You are not in control of her at all if you're holding the cameo button down at the time. So that's the first level. As long as you are holding the cameo button, she will not attack. She only attacks if you press an attack button without holding cameo. Now that can work when you're doing buttons that your base character is already stuck to an animation and then she can do an attack that you are not going to do with your base character by accident. So for example, I just do forward 1-2, now I do 4. That's because Sub-Zero is stuck in his forward 1-2, so when I do forward 1-2, release cameo, press 4, Sub-Zero doesn't press a button by accident because he's stuck in an animation already. This is how you do various combos. For example, let's say I want to combo off my low here. I'm holding cameo, back 3, 4, release, 4. And that's how you get an extension, right? And you can kind of go with whatever combo you want. But as long as you're holding down the cameo button, she will not attack. I'm holding my cameo button down the whole time here. And that's why he's not going to attack there. So going for the extended combos, while it is a bit execution heavy, and it can be weird to wrap your head around this, especially if you're unfamiliar with the puppet characters in this game, it is something that you can just simply learn. It's not very scary, don't worry. You know, just sit in practice mode, kind of find out what combos people are doing, and just try and come to grips with it. Because it really, it is tricky. But it's nothing that a player can't just learn, right? And once you learn it, the rewards can be pretty immense, depending on the character and, of course, depending on the situation. So controlling Janet separately is all about whether you do or do not hold your cameo button to make her move. And that's basically all there is to it. So I guess the final thing I want to talk about with this puppet mode stuff is kind of where you go from here. We are starting to see players already kind of use Janet within their combos when a mix-up is successful. So I did just demonstrate here, ground freeze, straight freeze, Janet, standing two to be plus. This whole sequence, you know, you can ambush the splits there, replenish. If I want to go for this kind of situation, Characters that have a stun built in while they do their attacks have a pretty big advantage here. 
because you have the luxury of stunning the opponent and then recharging Janet for your next mix-up. So that can be really beneficial for you. I'm just doing Sub-Zero because it just so happens that his standing freeze has enough hit stun to truly guarantee it on the ground. Many characters don't have this, but I'm just showing this as an idea. I'm seeing very similar things with Sindel, for example. Sindel has some really cheap stuff. But being able to, to combo in and extend things for really big damage uh, is a pretty big part of this character. Which is kind of why I'll go back to controlling player one here and I'll just swap sides so I can uh, demonstrate the other side of things. Uh, I'm playing a lot of rain at the moment and when I go for these kind of situations where you meaty, land a hit, I was holding down the cameo too long there which is why it didn't work. Yeah, even this combo, as silly as it looks, is doing really high damage. And then, you know, that's like almost 600 damage if you get the whole thing. Uh, that is entirely tied to getting a free activation, armor breaking the opponent, and then hitting them. If you want to use the puppet mode for pressure, let's just say uh, block automatic. Let's say the opponent blocks this. We still have an avenue here for like kind of whatever you want. This might not be the most optimal thing in the world, but the standing four that she has is incredibly plus, as is the standing three. Uh, ignore the frame data counter on the bottom because it does get confused with Janet's moves. Um, seeing that the opponent is blocking things and having your move come out on block, in this case, it will just be like something into Geyser, releasing Janet and then kind of doing the same thing again, release Janet and kind of loop this, maybe go for a cheeky overhead, you know, there's a lot of different variety you can go for. Uh, this is something that just sort of comes naturally, the more you practice and the more you get familiar. So on block, it's very similar to Sento, doing an attack on block, releasing the puppet, rinse and repeat. If you have a mix up, enforce it afterwards. And that's kind of where that style of the character is going to go. A style of the character that we're already seeing, which could be very, very scary, are block strings and a ton of chip damage. And that is the last thing I want to talk about. So, we're going to everybody's favorite character, Raiden, for this final example. Uh, I do have some Baraka examples that I can show you from Mustard's recent streams. He has actually been practicing a very similar situation. But using the puppet mode after a guaranteed activation to cement guaranteed block strings is a different element of absolute crazy business that Janet is going to bring forward. Now, with Raiden, for example... We're sort of seeing various combos, but the important thing is ending your combo in this, setting up Janet, meeting with your... <laughs> meeting with Storm Cell, and then having her do a couple of punches to guarantee a 1-2 Storm Cell that you kind of rinse and repeat. So let me just try. I don't really play Raiden like that, so I'll try and demonstrate the idea here. That's kind of the basic idea. Now, it's a lot more complicated than that. There are different things you can do. But if you have the perfect timing, being able to meaty a storm cell on the opponent's wake up, which if you time it correctly will armor break. Uh, that's not the only armor breaking example. As I showed earlier on, you can actually just meaty with uh, Janet's high punches with your own attack. And that armor breaks for many different characters, especially if it's a mid, because they can't mash down one either. Using Raiden's storm cell meaty to create this just insane loop of hard to avoid situations. It's just one extra element that Janet Cage is going to provide competitive. Meet you with this. You know. Just do a little bit of this, you know? The opponent can obviously flawless block this entire sequence, so it's not completely guaranteed. But being able to set up elongated block strings that she is then going to add extra buttons in to make the block string last even longer is a frighteningly practical application of getting the puppet mode out. And this is even without me uh, replenishing halfway. Like, with the right execution, and again, going back to putting moves in a queue that I talked about, you can actually line up that and have her do that as well. You know, you can just do a couple of high punches, but just queue up the replenish. And if you're timing it properly, she can be recharging her cameo gauge while they're in a block string 
and it lets the whole thing last even longer. Now, this is a really basic example. I will try and show you some clips while I'm talking now of Mustard doing the same thing with Baraka with much more reward. But it's not just block pressure that makes this so scary. It's the awareness of seeing something connect and turning it into a combo if you see the whole thing work. So let's say, in theory, so let's say I armor break him here. If I see this work, I can just turn it into a combo. And if you see it hit, just do a different attack and turn it into a combo, you know? <laughs> not the most practical of examples here, because it's not doing masses of damage, but you get the idea. There's a lot of different potential here, and uh, considering she's only been out for barely over 24 hours in this game, there is still potential for so much more to be found. And overall, whether it's grab combos, whether it's massive extended damage, whether it's the possibility of zoning or trapping the opponent into a weird situation because of the wall that she has, uh, the nut punch, which gives safe jump, which gives guaranteed block pressure because it's plus as hell on hit, it is also a reversal and a wake-up attack, although maybe not a very good one. And the absolute glaring example of a move the puppet mode, which just has almost limitless possibilities. We're seeing so much stuff already, and she's only just come out. This video has been quite a long one. Um, it is longer than these videos that I normally make, but she's a very complicated cameo, and so much has been found in such a short space of time. I really wanted to cover as much of it as I could here, on top of some of my own examples, like I've been playing a lot of Rain with Janet and having a good time with them so far. But overall, thank you so much for watching, stick around for plenty more Mortal Kombat where that came from, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.